Okay, to the delegates, we have yet another interesting session waiting for you, and this would be regarding the artificial intelligence capability to ensure quality and safe healthcare services. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and welcome Ms. Geetanjali, the CEO of Aduvo Diagnostic. Globally, 600 million people suffer from acute, chronic and traumatic wound. One in four diabetics develop ulceration in the foot and 70% of these wounds do not get healed because of an infection. This guy is a treated leprosy patient. He developed this very hypertrophic ulcer which is not healing despite multiple courses of antibiotics. We have developed a novel optical biopsy solution. Illuminate is a rapid point of care handheld device that can detect these invisible bacteria and make them more visible. Before this device, we would actually have to take a biopsy. It might take as long as seven days to help grow the slow growing bacteria. This takes a minute. The device leverages the autofluorescence property that is inherently present in these pathogens. By combining multispectral imaging with autofluorescence and also applying artificial intelligence on these spectral images, we are able to detect and also classify these bacteria. We believe our device can detect infections early on and significantly bring down the amputation rate. Hi everyone, thanks for giving this opportunity. Uh, this is just a perspective of where artificial intelligence is going in terms of uh, providing quality healthcare even in the last mile setting. And uh, I have structured my talk in three ways. First, I speak about where all AI is used, and second, how the healthcare system in India is, and lastly, how I go about at Adivo Diagnostics to target a specific problem statement. Uh, this is again my view, and I'm very happy with the previous panel where we had a lot of other discussions around this. Uh, so I hope I'll be able to justify and take on from where they started. Uh, so, I'm Gitanjali, founder of Edivo. Uh, I'm a bioengineer by background. And what really helped me start this company was uh, I met a doctor, Dr. Ayush Gupta in Pune, where he uh, receives around 200 patients on an average per day uh, with wounds, open wounds, and understanding whether it is bacterial or fungal infection is the main challenge. I've seen farmers who were treated with antibiotics for like eight years, 800 rupees per month on their hard-earned money for a fungal infection. So you don't use antibiotics for a fungal infection and that is really what triggered me into this particular company that I'm working on. Uh, of course, we have seen artificial intelligence being used and also misused in a number of applications uh, where it's applied on either signals or imaging to give meaningful outcomes out of it. Uh, let's say, be it uh, cardiovascular anomalies uh, detection from ECG signals, uh, be it diabetes prediction from PPG signals, uh, through even using deep learning models on images of the pathological tissues in order to detect cancerous tissues. That's again uh, interesting applications where there are lack of doctors and they're able to detect these at a much more early stage using artificial intelligence. And of course, we have seen the global trends where even uh, Apple have invested heavily in healthcare, where they are using it to detect arrhythmias and using the Apple Watch, uh, Google into protein folding structures, and Amazon and Microsoft into connected healthcare. And we should definitely also applaud our own heroes, startups based out of India who have raised a lot of money, uh, who contributed heavily during the COVID uh, in terms of the innovation that they brought in. And that is exactly where, as a company that I look forward, um, Edivo not only looks at software innovation, but also hardware innovation. Because if we really have to make breakthrough innovations, we have to do much more than just, just innovating on the software. Uh, so that's what, as a company, I strongly believe in, uh, where it's a combination of both hardware and software through AI or deep learning models, which we have to get into. 
Um, of course, you are all aware 70% of the rural population are in your villages where access to health is really low and all the trained, experienced uh, professionals are in a city hospital. And what is very, very important is to provide accessible, affordable, and also accountable quality healthcare, which is a very important statement at the last mile setting. Uh, of course, there are a number of national health mission goals that the government has proposed, and we are working on a very specific way in term with respect to diabetic foot ulcers, burn incidences, and also with respect to dermatology-related uh, infections. Uh, so the problem that we are looking at is wounds on a whole, which encompasses from wounds, uh, sorry, diabetic foots, uh, where one in four diabetics, as I mentioned, are at a risk of a wound to be developed, uh, burn incidences, which are very, very common with women and children, even from a remotest of a village. And what is very important is all of them have to come and meet a plastic surgeon or a vascular surgeon who are based in majorly in cities. So the huge gap is where amputation rate is increasing in India. Even globally, the healthcare expenditure to treat a wound till it heals and it's completely closed is really high. And what is the current gold standard method is looking at it visually and making a prediction instantly. And then, of course, waiting for the diagnostic tests like that of a culture method or that of other Doppler tests, CT angiographies to visualize blood flow which is very cumbersome and which leads to 57% error. Uh, and you, you've all seen that doctors do prescribe antibiotics as soon as you come, not because they don't want, uh, not because they don't know what to, pre I mean, of course, they don't know what to prescribe, but because many times the patients do not come back when the culture report is ready on the third day. So there's a blatant misuse and which raised antimicrobial resistance and it's the next, next pandemic that's waiting to happen because antibiotics are no, no more manufactured more than uh, post-1960s. So you don't know, you're, you're incurring advanced level of antimicrobial resistance and there is no antibiotics to treat it. So this is what exactly what we are looking at and we can address all these different segments that I have mentioned here. And to do this, there are three, three ways we are actually combating the problem of wounds. First, in terms of remote monitoring, we have developed a solution, an app, uh, which is called Wound Tele AI, which is in beta launch stage, where it basically connects somebody in a remote location with the nearest wound care professional available. So they are able to take an image using their smartphone, it gives a risk score, connects with the nearest doctor, and the doctor makes a prediction whether he has to come to the hospital for a dressing change, uh, removing the dead tissues, or there is some other problem that he needs to address. Now this we had perhaps come across only a later stage of our core product development because what is missing was connectivity from a remote location to a doctor and this is where we come in in terms of prevention where even a diabetes patient who are at a risk of developing an ulcer can use this app. It early predicts an ulcer that is about to be formed and it connects with the nearest doctor. And it gives you key wound analytics, which is presented to the doctor, and the doctor makes the decision there. Next comes our core product, where we have patented technology in India and in US as well, which is called Illuminate. It's the handheld imaging device that you have seen. This is used at the point of care with no trained, uh, with not, uh, with very, very minimal training, just like how you use your smartphone to image patients. In the same way, you can use this device. And it is again cloud connected. It has a UC, easy to use interface. So all your wounds are documented. Again, documentation is something that's missing in India. And that's again for wound especially, it's completely not there. And that's again another way that we interfere. So what this particular device does is, this is how doctors typically look at a wound. And this looks like a perfectly healthy looking uh, open skin. But using our device, you know immediately how much of bacteria is present, the middle image that you see is that of coming from the bacteria directly. So now the doctor is much more informed immediately that this is the bacterial status there. What should I do based on that? And last, we also look at the third image, the color coded you look at. It also tells you which are the regions of lower blood flow. Because if you don't restore blood flow, no matter how much antibiotics you're giving, it's not going to heal. 
you no matter how much bandage you are going to put it's still not going to heal so that is where we are coming in and what is very interesting is the gold standard method like a doppler or a ct angiography is done at a very very later stage to decide whether to amputate a foot or not so that is where the problem is if you can diagnose these blood flow issues early on you can of course treat them much more better rather than waiting for an amputation to happen so where does ai or deep learning model comes in we have applied deep learning on the spectral images that we have used we have understood that bacteria itself or the blood flow has natural fluorescence and reflectance property when you shine a light source and then we capture it as multispectral images we apply deep learning models on these image sets to understand and derive at the top four bacteria instantly at the point of care so you can at least tailor your antibiotics in a much more judicious way and then you can wait for a culture test uh, of course what we are replacing is the cumbersome way of a culture test where you have to take a sample send it to a culture lab wait for the results which takes more than 42 hours and in many cases it comes back as no growth because you have taken a sample from the wrong place so that is again another error that we are trying to uh, address using our solution and of course the cumbersome issues of using a ct angiography where you inject a dye understand where the blood flow is going on or using a doppler which is more point source to understand how much of a blood flow is what we are trying to replace with our innovation and last but not the least we have a solution that has done preventive health we have something to screen the wounds at an early stage the last we also want to close the loop where we also want to empower the doctors immediately to understand what tailored antibiotic to give and this is another device that is currently we we are in r d stage where you take a sample put it in this 96 well plate you are seeing here and it uses both auto fluorescence steady state and time dependent fluorescence which are uh, physics jargons but still it uses a perfect, uh, particular technology and tells you within four hours what antibiotics you need to give at the point of care so again in this way you are completely starting from a prevention till a diagnostic and that is what as a company we strongly believe in if we really want to work towards uh, health elevating wound care in general and the problems that they come across um, of course we use neural models on this uh, uh, fluorescence data that we have applied to advance predict the susceptibility pattern uh, of course uh, we have installations all across india for the past two years we have screened more than 20,000 patients as of now and counting we are in process of our us fda to take it even abroad and these technologies in us or canada or europe have proven track record to uh, bring down the antibiotic misuse and also improve wound healing at least four to five times and imagine what what more can it do when it comes to an Indian population and we are in no dearth of data we have population from all skin tones ethnicity so the AI is mainly we are using here to compensate for the background skin color which compensates to the noise so when I take my technology and use it in Canada and US it definitely works because it works in India so that's that's exactly where uh, you know making in India training your AI here really works and of course in terms of society societal impact uh, we want to bring down the rate of amputation by early detection preventing a uh, grade 2 ulcers into becoming a chronic wound which cannot be healed at all reducing the physician's time in terms of diagnosing and also improving the patient satisfaction because once an amputation is done they only survive for the next five years so that is where again the impact that we can create with all the three solutions put together uh, so our for future goal with this data that we collect over the next four to five years we not only do one treatment that fits for wall we want to do personalized diagnostic that looks at the background of each of the patients and give more treatment recommendation that's personalized for each of the population so that's exactly where as a company we again want to move forward with and uh, thanks again to nascom and a number of players like qualcomm who had supported us uh, to this stage at different part of our journey um, and i i hope uh, uh, this particular talk made sense to all of you and uh, uh, thanks again.
Thank you so much, Ms. Geetanjali, and I now request Ms. Uh, Kritika to kindly please felicitate Ms. Geetanjali. So, Ms. Kritika, the Aston Manager at NASCOM, will be felicitating Ms. Geetanjali, the CEO of Adivo Diagnostic. Thank you, ladies. Thank you so much.